Hi there, it's Mario here. In today's session, we're gonna learn how to make this controller work with the games that we've built. Let's have a look at some code and get stuck in. Today, we're gonna to be using the Pong game that we built in previous sessions. Uh, if you want uh, the tutorials on how to get up to the stage, there's um, a few that I've done on building the initial game, adding the sound, and then making the AI a bit smarter. So there'll be a link up here somewhere. <laughs> Um, where you can check out those videos. At the moment, the control input is just the keyboard, so the up and down arrows, uh, and I'm able to use the paddle, but it's only one speed that I can control the paddle. I can't make the paddle go slower. It's, the, uh, it's always the same speed that I move up and down. So using our controller, we're going to use the analog stick, the left analog stick here, um, and that will allow us to not only do the same thing as the keyboard's doing, but it'll allow us to change the speed of the movement uh, for the paddle. So we can move it a little bit to move slowly, and we can move it a lot to get that same uh, movement speed that we're getting with our, with our paddles. So let's have a look at the Ruby 2D documentation and then see um, the controller support. Uh, the thing to note is I'm using this uh, Bluetooth connected controller, but this should work fine for USB connected controllers as well. And I think there's support for quite a lot of controllers. Uh, let's have a look at some documentation. So I'm on the ruby2d.com website. Up at the top, if you hit learn and then follow the input link here on the left, you'll get to this page. And it goes through keyboard and mouse input, which we've gone through before in the previous sessions. Uh, but what we're interested in is this controller support here. So on the documentation, it notes that the buttons are mapped to a Xbox controller layout. Um, so uh, they sh it should map to uh, A, B, X, Y, and so on um, uh, like this. To start with, we're gonna just use this code here and that's gonna print out all of the events that we're getting on our controller. And I'm gonna put that below the keyboard input here. Okay. So now when I press the buttons, we should see them come up. So if I press the A button, uh, you can see that the button uh, A uh, event has uh, registered here. There's a button down and a button up event, similar to the keyboard. Uh, B, uh, you can see, uh, I press it twice, there's two lots of events here. Button B. Uh, for some reason on this particular controller, my mapping isn't entirely correct. So if I press Y, um, it's coming up as left shoulder, but um, uh, that should be fine. Uh, if I was building it just for this controller, we should be able to accommodate by changing those events. The thing that we're interested in here though is actually the analog controls. So if I use this left stick, you can see it's generating quite a lot of these events um, for both the Y and the X axis. And the values here go between negative one and one uh, for those axes. So we can use that value negative between negative one and one to be able to control our, our paddle. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually just to change our keyboard input to work on that scale. So at the moment, we're just setting the direction to be up or down. But what we want to actually do here is set the uh, y movement speed to be below between negative one and one. Uh, so that's what we're going to change. So here, instead of saying direction, um, we might change that. So let's use something like y movement. Um, and if we're going up, we're removing uh, y because y starts at zero at the top. So this will be negative one. And if we're going down, we will be uh, adding one. So one there. On the keyboard, when you let go of the key, it resets the uh, movement. So um, here, um, instead of being nil, we're gonna set that at zero, so it's not moving at all. So this will be Y movement. Um, and this will be zero. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our player class and change that direction attribute that we have uh, to be Y movement instead. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top of our player class. Our paddle class, sorry. And so here's where it happens. So you can see 
Um, here we've got a direction writer, so we can set that direction value. Uh, now what we want to do is set the Y movement value. And you can see the direction was initially set to nil, and we're going to change it to be uh, Y movement set to zero. So initially we're not moving at all. Now we need to change our move method as well to use this new value rather than checking the direction, it's going to use that Y movement uh, value. Um, and we can actually simplify this logic um, quite a lot. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, do something similar to uh, these lines um, by changing the y value. So y will be uh, the initial y uh, plus our uh, y movement. And we also will need to scale this movement. So we've got this movement speed uh, here, so let's say, for example, the movement speed might be 4. Rather than having that value between negative 1 and 1, we want to then uh, multiply it so that it will be uh, negative 4 to 4. So I'm going to multiply y movement by our movement speed to get that value. Um, and, and that should be our, our new y. Um, so that simplifies things a little bit. The last thing to do is just to uh, make sure we're not going out of bounds. So um, on those on these two lines here, we're making sure that we don't go below zero, so the paddle doesn't go below the bottom. And then we've got this max y uh, to make sure that the paddle doesn't go off the top. So we need to add that back into our uh, line here. And I'm going to use a method on Ruby called clamp. Now this is available on since Ruby 2.4, so I just recently started using this. And it essentially allows you to set a minimum or maximum value. And if the value is outside of those bounds, it'll take the minimum or take the maximum. So for our clamp, we don't want to go past zero and we don't want to go uh, above our max y. And so this code here essentially replaces this code now uh, with the added benefit that it should now work for our controller. Um, uh, values that we get on our analog sticks. So I'm going to delete this code and we're going to test it out now on our keyboard and make sure it all still works. Okay, so pressing down, pressing up, that seems to work fine. I'm making sure I can't go off the bottom, that's good and then it gets stuck on the top as well. So that looks like it's working fine. The next step is going to be getting our controller input working now. So back here on our documentation for Ruby 2D, you can see that um, there's additional events that we can hook into. So just like with the keyboard, there's a few different uh, events. So um, the keyboard, you can hook onto the key, which gives you everything but there is key down, key health, and key up events, which are all unique. We've got the same thing on our controller. So at the moment, we're hooking into all of the controller events, but we only really want to listen for that, uh, the analog stick there. Uh, so we're going to use this code here. So we're interested in the left stick, and it's the y-axis on that left stick. So I'm going to copy this to there. Okay, and we're going to replace this with this. So um, we're only interested, they've got a case statement here in the example, but we only care really about this one. So I'm going to just change this to be a bit simpler, just to a simple if. So I'm going to say if uh, this event axis is left y, um, then we will, uh, uh, we will do something Okay, so this event value here um, will be, um, you can see printed, that'll be that number between uh, negative one and one. So now that we've done the groundwork, we've set this Y movement, it should be a simple matter of um, setting our Y movement to be event.value. Okay, um, and then lastly, on the keyboard, when we lift up of the key, then it um, set, resets the uh, movement value to zero, so it stops the paddle moving. 
we don't actually need to do that on our controller. And the reason is when you let go of the, uh, the, the analog stick, it can't actually detect that your fingers are off. So there's no event that gets fired. But when the analog stick resets to the center, you will actually get a value that's um, pretty close to zero. So you can see here the last ones that I've got are 0 0.02. Um, so that, that won't actually be enough to move our paddle um, at all. So it's essentially the same thing. As soon as you let go of the analog stick, uh, it should stop moving, hopefully. Uh, and I just actually noticed, I, I mentioned earlier that I was um, getting some mapping um, inconsistencies just around the Y and the X. Uh, buttons and you can see I've actually got a controller uh, warning here just about that mapping so I'm, I'm assuming that's why um, it's having those difficulties uh, might be something for me to look into in a future video I'm gonna run this now and see if it all works okay so hopefully if I move it um, you can see here that it is moving the paddle um, and then hopefully if I move the paddle yes very cool so I can move the analog stick a little bit and uh, the paddle is moving uh, slowly. So that's really cool. It looks like it's working great. Um, awesome. And our keyboard keys um, are still working. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give me a like um, to help support the channel. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And if you like this content, then um, you can subscribe to get more videos. If you have any comments, um, any suggestions, or um, any requests for any future videos, then um, leave a comment below. And in the description, you'll find all of the code that was in this uh, tutorial on GitHub. Um, if you'd like to watch more videos as well, then um, I've done a collision detection video. You can click somewhere out here and um, watch that. Uh, and I'm also starting to build a platformer game. So if you want to watch that video, then you can click the link that's right out here. Thanks again, I'll see you next time.